and welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. This is the first Sunday of Advent, a time when we are going to be awaiting for something new to come, something new to happen. And we've got 365 more days, 364 more days to make something new happen. So I do have a couple of uh, announcements. First, um, this uh, Thursday, our at the table Bible study will start back up at 12 noon. We are talking about our hope stories. Also on Thursday at 5 p.m., uh, for grief support, there will be writing through our grief. Now, um, there t are, will be Advent devotionals available after worship service. Um, I didn't put them out because we didn't want you fingering through them because there's some good stuff in here. So um, Ryan's going to put them out somewhere out there or and so that you can get a copy of, of these. Um, this is also being used at Sunday school. So when you get a copy, hold on to it. We may be singing some of the songs in here as well as doing some of the poetry that's in this book. So take it and keep it with you and, you know, bring it back if you want. You know, we always still use the slides. Especially for those who are online, I would like for you to also, in addition to your communion elements, whatever you have at home, be it bread and juice or crackers and water, whatever you have, when you bring that to the uh, table with you, also bring your Bible. So everybody's going, we're going to use our Bibles today. Um, and uh, for those of you here, we'll use the Pew Bibles. And I'll tell you when we're going to do that. Are there any other announcements? And oh, I just want to say, because the choir look great with the rose on. Does it? Yes. Okay, so um, are there any other announcements? See, none. Let us worship God. God says, do not be afraid. God says, I have called you by name. God says, I will be with you. God says, you are precious and honored in my sight. At the beginning of this season, at the start of this week, at the top of this hour, may we wrap ourselves in these words. May we begin again. Let us worship our holy God. In a weary and worn world, how do we begin again? Where do we start? Let us begin with the good news. Let us begin by trusting that we are a blessing, loved by a gracious God. Let us begin with music and singing. Let us begin with warmth and welcome. Let us begin with hope. Yes, let us begin with hope. Today we light the candle of hope to shine a light in a worn and weary world. May this be our foundation. May this be our fresh start. May this be our new beginning. May hope flow forth from here. Amen.
Please pray with me. Holy One, you have promised us that the day of our salvation is near. Keep us faithful in love and watchful in prayer so that we may stand with confidence and joy at the coming of Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Our hymn of praise is, this is the day that the Lord has made, number 681, on the screen or in your hymnals. Be seated. In the Gospel of Luke, the angel Gabriel tells Mary two things that she is highly favored and that she is going to have a child. Mary's response to this news is simple. With awestruck authenticity, she asks, How can this be? Every time we approach the prayer of confession, I ask myself this same awestruck question, how can this be? How can God's mercy know no end? How can God be so gracious with someone as fickle as me? Regardless of the week we've had, this good news never changes. So join me in speaking the truth of our lives. Join me in the prayer of confession, and may God's mercy leave you awestruck. Let us pray. Affirming God, your first words to creation were words of love. You looked at this earth and said, it is good. You spoke affirmations through the prophets. You spoke blessings over Mary. You spoke belonging through Christ. At every turn, you have reiterated that we are a blessing, made in your image, held in your love. Forgive us for forgetting this truth. Forgive us for measuring our worth by society's measuring stick instead of yours. We believe. Help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Affirming God, how often do you speak to us and how often do we miss it? How often do you whisper blessings over us that we refuse to hear? Open our hearts, create space in us to not only hear these words, but to believe the good news tucked between them. We are hungry for your wisdom, so speak to us now. With hope and curiosity, we listen. With hope and curiosity, we dare to begin again. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. 
Let us take a moment to stand and greet one another with a sign of peace by turning and waving to one another and to those joining us online. Let's just take a moment, stand and just wave and you can do the peace sign and you can do fist bumps, elbow bumps, ask about hugs. <laughs> And there was something somebody told me last week, I forgot. But we could have peace. And let us just remain standing as we sing our hymn of forgiveness. <laughs> Star will shine in the sky. The tiny baby is coming soon. Angel songs will echo on high. The tiny baby is coming soon. Child of wonder, child of love, sent from heaven above. Tell the world to look for the sun. Ready. We want to be ready. We want. 
morning. Our theme today in Sunday school and worship and our little lesson here is you are a blessing. And that message applies to every one of us. So I want you to say that together with me, all of us, to say you are a blessing. You are a blessing. And turn to someone around you, look at them, and tell them, Come on, guys, find a partner, find a partner. You are a blessing. Interactive today. Isn't that wonderful? And our story today is about someone who wasn't powerful or rich. She didn't seem special to the world. Maybe she even had a hard time believing that she was a blessing. But then she gets a visit that changes her life. And I'm going to tell you that story. This is an adaption of the story from Luke chapter 1. And this was written by Reverend Anna Strickland, and it's called The Stranger. In a small town called Nazareth, tucked away in the hill country of Galilee, there lived a young woman named Mary who was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. One morning, a man in all white showed up on her front porch and said, Good morning, dearest. God is with you. Not knowing what this stranger wanted, Mary was startled, confused, and a little scared. She looked like a deer in the headlights, so the stranger told her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God loves you and has chosen you to be the mother of the Son of God. You will name him Jesus, and he will be a great and powerful ruler. Mary told him, you must be lost. I'm not powerful. I'm not special. I'm not even married yet. How am I supposed to give birth to a son? The stranger reminded her, not just any son, Mary, the son of God. I think the creator of the universe can handle creating a baby, don't you? Mary nodded politely, still thinking this man must have the wrong house. After all, Mary was a very common name around these parts. Oh, one more thing, he said. I forgot to tell you that I ran into your cousin Elizabeth a few months ago down in Judea. She ought to be about six months pregnant by now. Seeing Mary's look of shock, he continued, yeah, her husband couldn't believe it either. I know they're pretty old and all the doctors said it would never happen, but like I said, the creator of the universe can do just about anything. Mary told the stranger, well, then who am I to say no to God? If God chose me for this, then so be it. With that, the stranger tipped his hat and headed out to the main road, leaving Mary to ponder some more. So, That's kind of a fun uh, telling of of this story that might be familiar to a lot of you. And this image is one of the ones from our our series for this reading. And I had thought that that would be a picture of Mary and Elizabeth uh, when I had previewed the materials. But reading in the devotion, I found out that this is uh, Reverend Lauren Wright Pittman's depiction of Mary in the blue and the angel Gabriel. And it's interesting. In this story, he's a man in white. We were talking in Sunday school, it doesn't really say what he or the angel looked like. Um, And this author, uh, artist, chose a female uh, presentation. And it is interesting to think about uh, how we know this is a messenger from God, because it doesn't exactly say. So there's so many beautiful ways we can explore scripture through stories, poems, art, And I encourage you guys to pick up an Advent devotional because there are a lot of wonderful interpretations of some familiar stories through a lot of different artists' lenses and stories. But as for your own story, I encourage you to reflect today on what does it mean to be a blessing? And think about who has been a blessing in your life and who you have been a blessing to. And as we reflect on those questions throughout the week, 
Let's end together with a prayer. Most high God, we are so grateful that you have called each of us by name. You have blessed us to be a blessing in this world. Help us to remember that always. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you all would stand together as you're able and join in singing our hymn of preparation, prepare the way of the Lord number 95 in your red hymnals. Now pray with me, the prayer of illumination, affirming God, how often do you speak to us and how often do we miss it? How often do you whisper blessings over us that we refuse to hear? Open our hearts, create space in us to not only hear these words, but to believe the good news, tucked between them. We are hungry for your wisdom, so speak to us now with hope and curiosity we listen with hope and curiosity we dare to begin again amen our first reading today is from the book of isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 to 7. but now thus says the lord he who created you o jacob he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Our second reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favorite one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. 
The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please pray with me. Amazing God, thank you for this day and the many blessings we have received this week. We continue to say thank you for our family, our friends, our neighbors, even our pets. Lord, I ask that as we enter into this Advent season, you give us something that is new, a new thought, a new heart, a new way of looking at this world we live in. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our collective hearts be acceptable to you our strength and our salvation. Amen. So we are here again. It's Advent season with all this beauty. It's very beautiful. And a new season in the church here. Today brings an end to a tumultuous church year. A tumultuous year period in our government, our economics, our denomination, and our church. We have elected an old president, inflation is down, our denomination is merging its Office of the General Assembly and its Presbyterian Mission Agency into one, and our church is seeing decreasing membership and less people attending worship service. This is the time of the year that we need reminders that especially at this time of year, there we usher in something astonishing and something beautiful, and that something is about to happen. It's going to happen. It has happened. You see, we also need to be reminded over and over that there is hope. No matter what the situation is, we can find a new chapter in our lives that is about to happen. Our Sunday school lesson this morning, we talked a lot about hope and who has hope and how we can help others with hope. So just backtracking just a little bit, um, we're entering into a lectionary cycle. So there are three lectionary cycles. This is lectionary cycle C, which is for Luke's gospel, and each Lectionary um, Psycho focus on scriptures for one of the gospel writers. So year A is Matthew, year B is Mark, and year C is Luke. John, however, is quoted throughout everything, throughout all the lectionary cycles. So maybe this year we'll do an, an in-depth study on the book of John and the word of John. And thanks to the Worship and Prayer Committee, we decided to go with the color of blue for this Advent season. Normally it's purple, both are royal colors, but this year we decided on the blue. Both colors, blue and purple, are appropriate for the seasons of Advent and the season of Lent and for times of preparation and for times of penitence. So what are we preparing for? We are preparing to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
We are invited into God's narrative for this world. And like Mary, some of us may be ordinary people that did not and do not have power or prestige, but we are God's beloved. We are the ones to continue to deliver the message of the good news that Jesus Christ is God's son and that whosoever believes in God's son will not perish, but have everlasting life. But somehow we get it twisted. You know, we're human. We get it twisted. We believe that there is nothing left to do for our salvation. After all, we've been baptized, we do our sacraments. There's nothing left for us to do. But that's not what, Christ, what scripture says. Yes, we are formed and made by God who loves us and does not leave us. Yes, we are known and chosen and called for a purpose. And it's during this season of Advent that most Christians exude love for our neighbors, love for ourselves, and love for our God. So our love for God is shown in the many pageants and plays that we attend. We begin to listen to Christmas carols and songs that talk about the coming of a newborn king, of being hopeful in a time when so many do not have hope. And oftentimes, some of us find a new love for ourselves, especially after we have carefully thought out the gifts for others, what their favorite likes are, and we, what we think they may want as a gift, or what they may not already have, or something we can bless them with. And then for some, we still think about ourselves a little bit. We might treat ourselves to a good dinner. Well, I'm going to go have that steak dinner that I've been promising myself. Or we might have a new piece of jewelry, or a new coat, or something just for ourselves. And then we also have the love for our neighbors. And some use their talents and are extra creative and knit and crochet and bake cookies and quilt, assemble bags for others. Some use their treasure and some have prepared all year and made small purchases all year. Then there are those that may take their time a bell ring, visit the sick and the shut-in, make calls to those not heard from in a while. And all these things are reasons for this season of Advent because over 2,000 years ago, our Savior Jesus Christ was born and told us who to take care of in Matthew 25. And then he said, go and make disciples in Matthew 28. So this is our identity. This is the Christian identity. This is our identity as people who are saved with the blood of Jesus to go and make disciples because God's work did not stop with the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. It was just starting. It's an advent, just starting. It was the beginning this beginning, and this is us, to trust in our beloved status with our divine and enter into the good work God's hand began weaving so many years ago and to enter into the redemptive work that we are invited to during this season because you are a blessing. And I'm going to ask you to repeat that. I like that, Erica. Thank you. You are a blessing. That didn't sound like you believed it. Let's try one more time. You are a blessing. Amen. So this is the beginning of our series, uh, which is uh, words for the beginning for this Advent season. Please join me with this affirmation of faith. We believe in a blessing God who calls us beloved. We believe that this blessing showed up in the life of Mary and was also bestowed upon the hemorrhaging woman 
the poor in spirit, the children, the crowds, the Jews, the Gentiles, the faithful, and the doubting. So in faith, we trust that God's blessing, like ripples on the water, forever reaches toward us. And with wild hope, we believe that because of this blessing, we are covered in love. We are more than enough. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now it's time for our offering. Trusting in the sure promises of Christ and grateful for the Spirit's sustaining power, let's bring our tithes and offerings to God. We accept offerings uh, in the plate at the back of the sanctuary this morning. Also, uh, the office and its hours, we accept those there as well. Um, and also online. God of righteousness, you have saved us from the worst the world can do and have promised to redeem the whole creation when Christ comes again. In the faith and hope, we offer our gifts of money and self that we may be part of what you are doing in the world even now. As we watch for Christ's coming in glory. Amen. Communion hymn this morning is 832 here on Jesus Christ I will stand. Friends, 
Advent is a time of waiting, a season of waiting. We wait for Christ to be born, and we wait for the feeling that love is near. We wait for God's promised day. Advent is a season of waiting, and while we humans are good at many things, waiting is not high on that list. We are impatient, we are anxious, we are eager for the hope of what comes next. And maybe that's why this table is such a gift. For when we come to this table for just a moment, the waiting stops. We get a glimpse of God's promised day. We get a glimpse of a world where all are fed and all are welcomed. And for just a moment, we can believe the angels when they say, be not afraid. For just a moment, Mary's words tumble through our minds, words of justice and hope, words like the hungry have been filled or the humble have been lifted. So come to this table. Come catch a glimpse of what could be. Come in your waiting, for love is hovering close. This is what, all, what it's all about, God being all around us. So come, this is good news for you, and all are welcome here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. How can we thank you, O oh God, for sun and moon and stars, for breath and life and all things good, for your steadfast promise and your faithful love, for the day that is surely coming when all things will be made new, with saints, with angels, and with the whole creation, we join the ancient and eternal hymn. We give you thanks, holy God, for Jesus, who came to be your living word, to baptize us with spirit and fire, to feed the hungry, to humble the mighty, and to announce the good news of your coming realm. With thanksgiving, we remember how, when the hour had come, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles. Then Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is given for you. Take, eat, as often you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took a cup and he poured it and he blessed it and he said, 
This is the cup of the new covenant. This cup is poured out for you as a new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this cup and eat this bread, the other way around. As often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do this in remembrance of me. May your Holy Spirit be upon us, this bread, and this cup, and these people, Christ's body and blood given for this world. Daryl and Ann, could you join me, please? Ann will be holding gluten-free elements. This, these are gluten-free bread and juice in one cup. Daryl has, has the cup, the juice, and I will have the bread.
Please join me in the prayer after supper. Make us one in the spirit, one in the church, and one with Christ our Lord. Make us gentle, joyful, thankful people, serving our neighbors, worshiping you alone. The peace of Christ until you gather us into table in glory. Even now, a voice is crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. It is now time for prayers of the people.
God of blessings, once again we find ourselves standing at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of this Advent season, at the beginning of this new day, bringing our hearts to you. Meet us here, gracious God. Hear our prayers and offer your words of blessing. To start, we bring you prayers of deep gratitude. Similarly, we give you thanks for the people who, like Mary, have shown us what it looks like to trust our belovedness. Thank you for the folks in our lives who have acted with fierce bravery, trusting their call and your words of blessing. Their faith and conviction inspires our own. In addition to prayers of gratitude, we offer prayers for guidance, for even though we count this day as a new beginning, the words and messages of the past cling to us like quicksand. Let this day be a new beginning, Creator God. Erase our memories of self-doubt. Erase the how can this be question from our minds. Erase our insecurities and our fears and in their place fill our hearts with trust. Fill our spirits with conviction. Fill our minds with the knowledge that like Mary, we are made in your image. Like Mary, we are good. God of blessings, once again, we find ourselves standing at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of this Advent season, at the beginning of this new day, bringing our hearts to you. So on this new day, we pray, speak your words of blessing once again. And as you do, we will lift our voices to pray the prayers your son taught us to pray saying, pray then in this way. Our Father, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. And we also forgive our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil one. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn, Lord, make us more holy.
As you leave this place, may you have the wisdom to lean on one another. May you have the courage to hold on to hope and the compassion to do the good that is yours to do and the confidence to trust that God sees you as a blessing. For in a world full of dead ends, Advent invites us to begin again. So start here and start now. And start with love and begin again. In the name of Christ, our new beginning, go in peace.